Hi guys, it's Claris and happy Sunday. Today is July the 26th and we are getting ready for another session of loose florals. Um, and I think I might be focusing a little bit more on leaves today. So I'm just gonna give you guys some time to trickle in while I get myself ready here as well. I'm just going to make sure that I have my screen open so I can see um, any comments. Uh, so there we go. I have I have my screen ready. And welcome, guys. I can see six of you are here. Um, and while we're quickly waiting for everyone to come in, I just wanted to bring your attention to this mask that I got done. And for those of you who remember it, this was the painting that I had done, I think two Sundays ago. And then I decided, hey, let's just try out the watercolor mask. Didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. I think I, I sent the printer this bit because I only wanted this area to be printed all across. I didn't want as much white space, but it turned out really good, I think so. And uh, I'm just giving you guys an idea of what you can do with your artwork because I'm sure a lot of you have probably painted quite a few things uh, and while it's nice to gift people cards and I guess wall hangings or framings uh, it's kind of nice to take it and create something a little more personalized like a mask or even I mean there's a lot of ideas out there like your own mugs uh, the sky's the limit really so just thought I'd inspire you guys a little bit by showing you what you can do with your work. Um, WJ, yay, hey, welcome. Uh, okay, so what I also wanted to touch on was, uh, let me put these away, this week's tutorial, which was on the radiant um, concentrated, radiant concentrated um, watercolors. I don't know if you guys had a chance to check it out, but these are the babies I am referring to. Hi Nancy, welcome. Um, and I just purchased them online and on Amazon and I figured I want to try it out because I love the flow and yeah, so um, this was this week's tutorial, so it was the first one. I figured for those who are still venturing and not quite sure how to maneuver uh let me do a really quick one an easy one to follow so this if you haven't checked it out yet check it out um i totally totally am in armored with um with these colors so i'll be doing more tutorials for sure as we kind of go along um hi lydia welcome is it as hot in scarborough as it is over here i'm pretty sure it is hi pamela welcome Hi Mikey, or Mickey, if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, I'm just going to get my paper ready and then I will let you guys know that we're starting. So as per usual, I have my Canson watercolor paper um, and for my brushes, I am going to be using my squirrel mop brush my princeton eight and we will have the silver black velvet in the eight and the four for ones that need to be um super thin okay mikey exactly that's 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 exactly how i pronounced it first and then i said hmm let me just clarify to make sure thank you um, okay, I also have my water ready and uh, for colors I am going to be using uh, my St. Petersburg that I have lined up on my pen over here. So I'll let you guys know as I kind of go along uh, about the colors that we're using. Alright, so if we are ready to begin, I think we can begin. So today we will do uh, more of a pattern and um hi deborah i'm so glad you could make it 
Uh, we're just about getting ready to begin. And uh, as I was saying, we're going to do more of a pattern today. So I'm going to do more leaves with a little bit of florals involved, uh, just so we can have a nice pop of color in terms of um, um, balancing the greens with, you know, some fun colors. So I'm just going to make sure that I have <clears throat> my screen so I can see everyone messaging, if anything, and we will begin. Also, before I um, start really quickly, I know a lot of you do a lot of watercolors. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to put this question out there. Let me know in the comments. Um, uh, how many of you would like to create your own website and have a showcase of your artwork? Um, and the reason I'm asking is because I potentially have some exciting stuff for you guys coming up. So let me know in the comments how many of you are actually looking to do stuff like that and we will go from there. All right, okay, so let's begin. Enough chitter chatter. So I will be using my, um, for, for the leaves, I'm gonna be using my green from St. Petersburg and the umber and I'm also going to um, have this guy handy. I believe it's the Mars Brown. Um, and we could pro probably even have the Burnt Umber, which is right here, I think. So I'm going to have these four for leaves. And um, yeah, and I think we can begin. All right. So as I said, we're going to do a very leafy pattern today. I'm going to try and keep it simple, but repetitive so you guys can get the hang of um, practicing leaves because I hear that's a problem spot for many. All right. Mikey, thank you so much. Leah, you're excited. I am also excited. Um, Pamela, yes, as soon as I complete more good paintings, would love to hear your thoughts and ideas. Okay, perfect. I'm glad that everyone... Uh, is on board or most people seem to be on board for stuff like that. I will definitely be um, letting you guys know about that soon. All right, so we're gonna start off by using the number eight. And I am going to use, I'm gonna keep my palette over here so I have, um, so I have that handy. And we're gonna start off by using a mixture of the umber and I'm just gonna mix some on here so we have these handy and then we can just take variations of all the greens that we have happening on the palette um, I'm gonna take more of that and put more here all right perfect so this is good um, so I'm gonna start so we want a decent amount of water on here because we want it to be dark, but not super opaque. So starting off, we will have random placements because this will be like a pattern. So I'm just going to start off by doing a, a twig over here on this end. And this is also a great way to practice your your thin lines. I hear that's quite a problem spot for a few people as well. I'm gonna have my number eight handy because this is what I'm gonna be doing next and you'll see. So for leaves, I'm literally just from the stem, pressing down and tapering off and pushing down all the color to the stem. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of the umber with the eight and then from the side, I'm just extending, pressing down, oops, I need more water, pressing down, touching the first leaf, and just kind of adding that thin flare. So you see how the water kind of flows in? That I did on purpose, so I'm doing the same thing here. And this one, okay, that trying to touch it as well. I 
didn't quite get to touch it as much, but there you go. I pushed it in and it's giving me that blend again, which is great. I'm going to go back using this brush. And so I have two variations of color happening and I'm just going to keep on doing the same shape here. So literally these leaves are easy to do. You're kind of drawing your little stem and then you're with your tip you're just pressing down and then trailing off and that's how you get like a super easy leaf as you kind of go along and you can use again like I said variations of the paint and just go to the center and add an extra dark line and you're kind of good to go so there you go some easy leaves I'll do one more here just because I have a nice dark green and I want it to touch that umber leaf that I have happening there we go all right so leave it at that or actually no I'm inspired to do one leaf over here so let me just do that and then we'll leave it there we go and I'm pushing down all the color the dark color to the bottom okay so just do that you can trail the end of the leaf off and kind of leave it that way so it's pretty right like you can really get some nice flow movements depending on how you bend the leaf or the stem so we'll do the same idea around here so this one I'll just have it going down this way and this should be a tad easier for me to do because now it'll be pressed down and pull forward so starting off just like I showed you previously we're just having the edge um, starting from the bottom touching the tip pressing down and then trailing off It might take some getting used to so if you do if you go over it two or three times that's okay it's totally fine it's all about practice and getting it right and formulating your own manner of doing it so see like these ones I'm literally doing it in two strokes as opposed to the one stroke that I was doing up here so find your groove and just keep going with it um, I'll do another one here so this dried up so it's not given me that nice flare but the stem was still pretty damp so that looks like it's blending in a bit I'll do another one here, probably take a dark, yeah, I put more of the green on the brush and so I'm getting like this nice dark streak through the leaf. I'm just dipping the tip into the water because now I want a lighter variation of a leaf as opposed to the dark that we have going on. And then I'm just pushing the color down. So these are simple and quite relaxing to do. You look, because it's quite repetitive and it can be a seamless motion almost at some point. So here we go. We have two very similar styles. Let's do a third one and then we can kind of move on to a different style of leaf and keep on practicing these. All right, so let me get some more paint happening here. And this one, let's do it. Let's do it this way, curving this way. And so once we have three happening, we can move on to the next one, like I said. So again, practice your thin stems or branches. 
um, while creating something pretty and a pattern. So again, I'm doing two strokes to get these leaves and then pushing down all the color to the bottom of the leaf. Doing another one. Okay, this is a lot of color. I seem to have something on my brush. There we go. All right, pressing down and trailing off. Pressing down again and trailing off just because I want to make my leaf thicker than the thin version of it that's coming up. Uh, getting some umber. Pressing down, trailing off. Pressing down, trailing off and just taper the edge if you like the nice curvy tips on the leaves. All right, so I'm gonna go in and get a little bit more of the umber and see if I can have it mix here, even though it looks quite dry. So pressing down, trailing off. Yeah, it didn't quite work as well. That's okay. You win some, you lose some. It's all good in the hood. So pulling that down, all right, let's go on, do one here, kind of coming up this way. So you just touching the tip, I'm pressing down the whole brush and then trailing off. That was a little bit shaky. Let's do that again, pressing down and trailing off. And then just push the color down to the stem. All right, and then you can add a hint of dark green at the stem again, and if any of the areas are still damp, it'll catch on and spread quite nicely. Let's do a couple here. I'm gonna try and make them less, I mean smaller in size, and then I'm pushing the color down. There we go. So these are fairly simple and easy to do, right? Like, what do you guys think? Let me just read the comments really quickly. Um, hi, Laura. Welcome. Oh, I'm so glad, Laura. This is so nice to read that I've inspired you to become looser with the florals. I know it can be quite a task on learning to be, you know, perfect. At least it was for me. Um, Yes, um, and regarding your question on the hydrus line for the Dr. P.H. Martins, no, I haven't um, used it. I'm pretty sure I responded to you already, but yeah, I haven't quite reached that stage as yet. I figured let's try the concentrated first, and then uh, possibly hydrus will come along. Um, Nancy, hi. Um, when I push down color, I get a streak. Um, what do you mean by streak, Nancy? Are you not getting what I am doing here? And uh, Sharon, really excited. What I needed to watch. I'm having the hardest time with leaves. Yes, I know. Quite a few people have been mentioning about leaves, so I figured let's just do a session on leaves and have fun with it. Um, yes, thank you. Becky, it is true. Once you kind of get going, it's all about picking that brush and just making the effort to do it. And then you really do get better. Uh, gets a line in the middle. Maybe you're not uh, mixing your colors well, Nancy. Make sure you're mixing it properly. We're, we're going to do more leaves. So keep trying. Keep mixing it. Use different consistencies from water and paint and then see if it's still happening. And maybe just send me an image on Facebook or Instagram through a private message and I can tell you exactly what's happening, possibly. Hi Carla, welcome. All right, okay, so we're gonna continue. Um, so the next kind of leaves, we'll do something that's a little longer in, a um, little thinner and longer compared to these ones, which are a little more normal, I guess. Um, so for this one, I'm going to use the number four and I will still keep my number eight hand handy um, and we will use some of these browns that are happening here. So we'll start off with 
using, uh, I believe this is the Mars Brown from St. Petersburg. But I feel like it's really bright. Uh, so I might mix it with the sepia a little bit just to get a more less brick look, more of a brownie kind of look. All right, so I have that. I think this is good enough. Um, so we'll do ones. Yes. Yeah, so again, we're doing a stroke to get the line or the stem. And let's just keep going in the same motion that we have happening so far. Uh, if you feel like the brown is too light, uh, feel free to use another brown of your choice. Um, we're not stuck to a certain type here. So I'm going to take some of the umber only this time and then extending from the edge, pulling out, and I'm just doing longer leaves this time. And because it's still damp, I'm getting that nice blend of brown and green happening. And again, give it, press down, but you're not pressing all of your brush down and trailing off, just like you trailed off with the previous leaves. Push down the color to the bottom. I'm getting some green mixed in there now and trailing off again so these need to be thinner and longer in shape so you're exercising a different method here to execute this in the first one we press the the whole length of the brush for this we're literally just pressing down the first bit of it Mixing some water to get a different consistency and vary, variant in the green. Trailing off. Again, quite repetitive, therapeutic. For me at least. I'm going to do one more. Trail off and end it at that. Alright, so there we go. So we have a slight different variant in shape for leaves here. Um, next one we can do over here. So I'm just going to do a line. Comes this way. And Carrying on with it, touching the stem, extending out, and pressing down, and trailing off. Same thing here. I'm going to get some water to get a different, a lighter version of the green. There we go. And trailing off. And then pushing down the color again and you can kind of switch the angle of your paper if you find it easier I know I do so I'm just switching that around so it's more easy on my wrist to kind of get that shape that I'm looking for So you can even start from the outside in and then connect your stem. So whatever suits your fancy, you can literally do it both ways. Um, you'll find one way easier than the other. Stick with that and go with that, I say. So I just put a hint of brown on this one. Let's see how that turns out. So 
So this turned out a lot darker. There we go. All right, and then I'll just do one more here at the end and twirl it. There we go. All right, so I like that. Let's do a third one of this and then introduce another color perhaps because all these greens are quite similar, but nice. They're, they kind of look really nice, I think. So let's do one more. Um, I'll do one here facing this way. That's dried up. Yep. Let's do one this way. And then mixing the colors. We're doing the same thing. We want the thinner leaves, so we're pressing just the top half of the brush. Not all of it like we did with the other leaves. Or if you're starting from the outside in, give it a little twirl and then touch the stem to close that up. Same thing here. See my hands moving. Touching the stem, there we go. You can do ones that are kind of more outside. Um, not outside, uh, what's the word? Bent, yeah, bent at the tips, kind of outside, facing outside. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, again, completing this, and I think we can leave it this way and not have too many leaves on this branch. So just kind of, okay, no, I have to do one more over here on this side and then we can call this done. There we go, okay. So this is it, so now we have three of each. Now we can kind of introduce another one. I'm just gonna, before I start the next one, I'm just gonna quickly read comments. Um, uh, Becky, you're getting better. Yeah, I, I read that one already. Yes, um, yeah, I, I love hearing from you guys. So honestly, if you guys have any questions, please don't feel um, weird to send me a message and, you know, ask away, please. Uh, hi, Zanette, welcome. Yes, Lydia, um, these strokes that you're doing here could also be used for petals. So it really depends on the floral, like the thin ones that, that I've been doing are more the versions you would use for the dahlias, at least the dahlias that I have on my tutorials. If you guys have checked that one out, it's, it's pretty much doing this repetition, like the shape repetitively in a circular motion. Um, thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Zanette. Um... Yes, uh, Laura, my hashtag is Claris Gomes watercolor. Or if you just send me, if it's a question like you, like you just had about the stroke, just send me an image, snap a shot of it and send it to me via direct message and I can have a look at it and I'll tell you exactly what it is. Um, cannot get in thin. Nancy, maybe it's the kind of brush you're using. Like if you use the four, it might be thinner and easier for you to for you to kind of maneuver. Um, yeah, try try a couple different brushes and see what works because sometimes it is also the kind of brush it is. Um, yes. Okay. So moving on, uh, we're going to continue uh, with another style of leaves. So for this one, let's. Um, Let's introduce like a gray. Uh, for that, I'm going to take my black, which is right here from St. Petersburg. I'm gonna get some of the black. Just have that on my palette. And you can choose to mix some of this black, gray, whatever you're using um, with the green. Let's give it more of that hint, yeah. 
So it looks more of a darker grayish green, I guess. It ties in with these colors that we have happening. Uh, you could also venture off into purples if you wish, or blue. Uh, make it fun, make it pretty, make it yours. Okay, so, so for the next one, we're going to do ones that are slightly more detailed in nature. And by detailed in nature, I mean like so. Um, let's do a... I just want to make sure this is all dry. Yeah, it is. So let's do one that's coming out, coming down this way. So I'm using my number four. And this one will have sprigs, almost kind of like a fern, but not quite. And we're doing little, we're doing very little, what's the word I am looking for? Leaf strokes. Now I'm just taking water because this is quite damp. And I'm going to create my strokes. But still too much water on here. So if you have your paper towel handy, which you should, I'm just using, I have mine right here. Creating the strokes without, without, with just water on my brush. And this is pulling the color from the stem. So this way you're getting a nice variation of color. And it's easy. All right, we'll do another one here this end and I'm doing the same strokes if you want a thinner brush I'm using my number eight absolutely use something thinner if you feel like you're not getting the tiny leaves they get there harder and so it's giving me this really nice monochromatic effect which I like I feel like it adds something whimsical and nice to a painting. I'm just going to add a few leaves that are dark. Again, these are also super repetitive and easy to do. Um, once you get the hang of it, of course. And because it's repetitive in nature, you will get better. So keep at it. So I'm just doing a couple, a few ones here to get that color on there. And then I'm just taking my brush that has only water and I'm creating the same strokes. And it's just giving me a lighter version of the green. So you, it's pulling from what we've laid down. So again, I'm creating some more. And I'm making my... Um, making these extended stems shorter as I go higher. So it gives it a nice shape. There we go, pushing some of the color, help the color move if you must. And if it's not doing it by itself. There we go. So I just love this method because it just gives you a really nice light, dark effect and um, it looks like watercolor. It's not consistent in color and that's the beauty of watercolor. So I like doing this. So I try and incorporate it in as many things as possible. My paintings. Um, tutorials everywhere. All right, so I think we can taper off and end it off with just a couple here. And then just one more maybe trailing this way. Yeah, give it, give it the shape that you want. It's up to you how far you want to go and where you want to end it. I'm going to leave mine this way. So again, see how it's like light at the end, it's dark at the tip. I like that effect. It's very pretty. 
I'm just going to intensify the darkness by adding at the tip um, adding more black so it can literally look like from dark to light so you can just go in and touch the areas where it's still damp and the color just flares up right away so there you go like from dark to light all right so we can do the same thing somewhere else here because this is our pattern that we're creating I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, let's do one um, let's do one here on this side yeah so I'm gonna have it go this way yeah let's do no let's have it go facing down so there you go and I'm going to create one here and start off here so again my way of doing this is I create my stem I'm doing alternate leaves and then I'm going in with this brush which has only water and I'm creating the rest of the leaves for this and that gives you that light to dark kind of effect so I'm doing another one here doing every other leaf and going back in with my number eight and creating additional leaves pulling from the watercolor that we have added with the previous leaves and same thing with the other one, I mean the next one. Adding leaves as we go along. And then finishing it off with just water on the brush. So timing is imperative for something like this because if you take too long and it dries up, then you've kind of missed your boat on that. So keep that in mind. Let me take it more. So creating some every other leaf. And then going in, switching your brush and using just water. Creating the rest of your leaves. Alright, so again, I know I keep repeating myself, but repetition is good. People need to be reminded more often than instructed. That is one of my husband's favorite quotes. And I kind of agree with it. So, yep, creating. So yeah, when you're when you're doing these, like if you're not following exactly, I prefer it if you guys kind of, once you get the idea of how this works or the kind of leaves that we're doing, kind of go and do your own thing when it comes to how long the stem is, what direction the leaves are going in, and make it your own. Like, that's the beauty of painting. I would hate for you guys to just follow me and mimic everything I'm doing because part of getting your own style means, yeah, you learn a technique, but then at the same time, you make it your own by trying things that, I guess, would come to you and not necessarily come to me. Um... And then this way you evolve and you get your own style. So that is my wish for you guys. So let's, I think we'll end this one off here. So I'm just going to do a couple at the tip. And I'll end this one this way. I'm adding some water in the center so that it can seep 
from the leaves into the stem as well. And then I'm just adding some extra leaves here. And now that these leaves are darker, I'm just kind of pushing down on the stem so that it has that same effect that we have up there. Might not necessarily turn out exactly the same way, but you know, it doesn't have to. All right, so there's our second. We can do one more and <clears throat> I think this is coming along quite nicely. Um, let's add the third one. Where can we add it? Uh, let's add the third one up here, I guess. Or no, let's just do it over here. There's a lot of space, so I'll just have it going this way. Now notice how thicker my line is over here. Sometimes you don't have control over those things. In which case, embrace it because nothing can be done and that's okay at this point. So going back in, I put in my leaves and I'm creating my other leaves with just water on my Princeton Neptune. And that's pulling the color. So I'll do another one this way. And I'm giving it a bit of a twirl at the end. I like the twirls. They kind of exude movement almost when you paint them that way. So as opposed to just straight like leaves that are just straight out. So giving them like a slight curve at the end always adds something nice. So continuing on, we're doing every other leaf and then going in with just the brush and drawing in from the color that we've already placed down. We're creating other leaves. And then let's just do one more. Oops, kind of messed it up there. That's okay, let's try and cover it up. There we go. And we could probably just end this off here. So yeah, uh, let me do this. Because I don't want it to be too leafy because we've, we've got a lot of detail here to begin with. There we go. Yeah, so let's just leave that one as is. And yeah, so this is our three different leaves that we have happening. Now what you can also do uh, and this is going to help us differentiate the leaves that we have going on here. So I'm going to take a little bit of my dark green and I am going to mix some of it with what I have on my palette already. Maybe even get some of that brown in there, maybe, yeah, just a little bit. And what I am going to do next is I'm going to give the thin leaves... No, I'll give the thicker leaves some details. So all I'm doing is I'm going, I'm giving it a spine. And you can either end it off with the spine by not giving it too much detail or add more veins to it. And there you go, you've given it some additional detail which will make it stand out more than the rest. Now another thing you can do is you can add your spine, just like we've been doing with these leaves here. You could go in with your other brush and just 
draw draw the veins out if you have enough color on your spine so it literally looks like a lighter um, like light detail that's on the leaves and it's not overpowering so you can see it and it's like faded in and out and it's a pretty effect as opposed to this startling detail here I don't know if I'm making sense in my description but I like I like this detail more so it's not overpowering but again it's a preference both work it's just an additional step to your leaves and that's if you prefer it this way if you want to just leave it plain as is it that works too I'm just going to add a couple of different variations because uh, sometimes you might want to add details to your leaves but it doesn't necessarily mean you want to add it across the board on all of them you might just want a couple of them to stand out so Yeah, and then even the kind of color that you use to add this in, I'm using a darker color, you might end up want to using a lighter color too. So try a couple of different things and see what suits you. Oops, touched some of the paint. All right, adding one more line. And then closing off the detail. There we go. And then we have one more here. Yeah, so you see how it makes it stand out from the others. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice detail to have. I'm just reading comments again. Um, Sharon, I am glad. I hope you do try it. Yes, my shell. Everyone asked me about my shell. When we went to Newfoundland about two or three years ago on vacation, uh, we were on some coast and there was this retired sailor who was there and saw my daughter and was like would you like a shell and it's so yes it's actually stolen from my daughter it's not mine <laughs> um yes it does make a cute little palette so i do like it all right continuing on with these details here i'm just gonna go and try and be as thin with my brush strokes as possible Same thing here. Yeah. So the more you kind of do these arcs and drawing the stems and veins and stuff, the easier you'll find your strokes will become. Because for me, one of my issues is my hand shakes a bit. I think it's like one of those subconscious things. The more you feel like you're th telling yourself not to move, the more <laughs> it shakes. So at least that's what I think is happening here. All right, just adding some more of these. And then we can actually add a bloom or two and then we can wrap up. So I think we have a pattern happening and we'll just add a little bit of color to it and we should be good to go so I'm just gonna add one line here and boy am I glad that the internet's working well today after last Sunday which was absolutely horrifying all right okay so I'll do this later because I don't want to bore you guys by like just doing the same thing um, 
so let's let's move on to the flowers um oh chris oh no worries chris just do the replay <clears throat> do the replay <coughs> excuse me okay let's try this again do the replay once the video posts and you should be able to catch everything um <clears throat> Nancy, yes, I do have a Facebook group. If you just look up Clarice Gomes Designs, you should be able to find me on Facebook or even, yeah, the link is actually in the description, so you can totally check that out too. Um, check it out that way. All right, so let's just do some blooms to add to this, and we don't want to make them crazy difficult, just want to add some pop of color. So I think I'm going to use some of my, uh, where is the color that I'm looking for? I'm going to use a, an orangey, yes, an orange color. Let's just go with orange. And I believe this is called raw sienna from the St. Petersburg collection. I'm going to mix that up with some of that brown that I have and And we'll just do some quaint little cute blooms and this is just to give it some color on here so uh, I think the first thing we'll do is add some like branches green branches uh, yes let's do one here And then I'm just going to go in and add some color like this. I'm literally just painting that on just by adding strokes. And then once I have that, I will take my take my Princeton Neptune, making sure that it's clean, and I'm just going to use water and pull from here because again I just want the color to kind of flow in without being too overpowering and I'm just mixing the color around okay uh, technically what I could have done was just alternately place the darker orange as opposed to having one side dark and then the other side light uh, but we can try that here. Let's try it here. So again, if I'm just doing strokes and then I'll do another one here and pushing the color down and then finally in the middle I'm going to go in with just water and adding a couple of strokes leaving white space. And that's it. We'll just do some here on this one because there's a third happening right there. And then just leave it. And finally, we'll just add a couple of leaves to these. And I'm just adding very simple leaves. So one stroke, like an arc another stroke also like an arc and then you're closing that up same thing here adding three leaves and leaving that um, yep then we kind of go on and do that maybe in two more places um, yep so let's do one here And I'll do the leaves right now itself. So one arc, second arc, close it up. One arc, second arc, close it up. Or if you have a thinner brush that you're using, like the four, then you can just kind of press down and create it just like we've been creating these leaves previously. Uh, again, I am doing the same thing with my orange adding a couple of strokes 
Uh, you can also include another orange just to get a different variation if you wish. Like I just got some of the darker orange from the palette and I am creating another roundy petal and then going in the middle leaving some white space but touching both the oranges so I can get a mixture for the center. And there you go. Just adding a couple of strokes at the edge. And I'll just do this one as a little pod. Adding some of the dark orange at the center, I mean at the bottom, and then leaving it at that. Um, what did I use for my green? I used the number eight, so I'm just going to add another leaf here and leave it at that. And then we'll do a third one because you all know I like to do mine in threes. The designer thing. Um, let's do it. Let's do it up here. And this one can be facing this way, outward, and then one coming this way. And let's just do the leaves right away, <clears throat> sporadically. All right. Um, again, I am using the orange to create my first bloom. So here's one. Then I'm going to use some of the darker orange to create the next one. But I'm touching the orange that I've already laid down. And then finally, going in with Princeton Neptune, I'm adding some water in the center of it and off to the sides as well. So it can be nice and flowy. All right, so let's do the same thing again for this side. And then I'm just adding some of the water in the center, but leaving a lot of white space as well. And just a little bit at the edge. There we go. All right, so we have our little blooms. And uh, yeah, these are good. So we could, Oh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to do one more, one more, and then we can be off. So I'm going to use some of the blue purple that I have here. And this is left over from my uh, radiant tutorial. So this will be a radiant color on here. So uh, this one is going to be more like a thin, um, almost like what's it called? What's it called? Ah. Uh, Lavender, yes. So we're adding another spiny kind of shape to what we have going on. So just a straight line. And then I'm just doing a couple of dabs of color. And it's thin at the top and you get slightly more variation at the bottom. Or sorry, th uh, thicker bigger, wider at the bottom, whatever you want to call it. And while I like the blue, I'm going to introduce some black to it because it seems to be a tad bit too, just on the spine. And yeah. So just adding that softly, lightly, and then I'll take the 
Princeton and I'm just gonna add a few dabs of water around touching the blue and what this does is it separates dark from light and creates like a nice effect so you can leave the top with just a couple of dabs it doesn't have to be super detailed um, but yeah just the bottom can be a little more fancy if you wish yeah so something like that um, I would want the stem to be a lot longer it seems to be quite short so I can just make it longer this way I guess and again it's just adding some variation to your painting and also it's like another method so again I did my spine I'm adding a couple of dots at the top adding some in the center and some more at the bottom And then going in with my Princeton, I'm just going to dab and add. So this looks to be a lot more black, even though I dipped my brush in the purple, but I guess I had black previously on this, so it's quite dark. That's okay. I like the variation, so I'm going to stick with it, but feel free to kind of Make sure that you have your purple if that's what you wish. I'm just going to add some purple. Okay, see, it's too dark. It's too much black happening. That's okay. I like it. I actually kind of like it better than, than the purple. So, adding, I don't know why I made that thicker. I shouldn't have. Uh, one more. Let's do one more. And let's do that here. There we go. And again, same thing. A couple of dots at the top. A couple more at the bottom. And you're just being loose and light with it. And then going in with the Princeton. I'm just going to add some water drops or dabs I like the thin um stem as opposed to the thick one. Now the thick stem is going to bother me, but it's okay. So here, another variation of, I guess, greenery or leaves or whatever you want to call them that you can add to your, your paintings. And uh, yeah, so this is it. Um, you can go in and add a little more simpler florals if you wish, but I think I'm just going to end it at this. Um, actually no, before I end it off, I am going to add little berries to our pattern. So I think for that we can use some pink. Yes, let's use the pink. So I'm using um, the quinacridone rose that I have from Daniel Smith. And I'm just going to create these. These should be quick. So literally just round berries. And taking, no, let's take this. And getting some of the green. I'm just gonna add some stems to it. And obviously my famous 
effect that I like, just adding some water to create another um, hint of a berry. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Let's do some more here. No, here. Let's do it here. Oh, that was green. Okay, that's okay. I forgot I used this. I'm going to add some pink to it and have it intersect so then it kind of flows in. And creating another one by using just water. And then touching at the top as well. Um, which one did I have? Yes, right here. So, creating the stems now that extend. To it so just leave it at that and then again we can add some here touching the edge again because I want that super light berry and then we'll just do one at the top here see when the water pools like this that's when you know there's too much water applied um, just take your paper towel and dab it off and that should work well enough and I believe this is what I had for the green. Yep, and there you go. You can just kind of end off that way. Adding another one. There we go, yeah. So feel free to add more guys as you go along, but this is pretty much the idea of just a couple of different leaves that you can do for your paintings, your floral paintings. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you find value in this. And if you found it really helpful, please do consider sharing this on your social media channels, guys. It really, really, really does help my channel grow as well. Um, and what else? What else? Hope you're having a lovely Sunday. And yes, please, anyone who has questions, um, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Send me your DMs there. Um, send me your pictures. I love seeing your work. So thanks for joining me, guys. And we'll chat soon. Have a lovely, lovely Sunday. Bye. Nancy, Leah, Chris, Lydia. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.